Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, participants all over the globe. The fifth international webinar 2021 by MAELT postgraduate program of Mindanao State University. Uh, this is a, an interesting webinar, December the 10th, 2021. My name's Iksanuddin, a lecturer at Universitas Tanjung Pura, Pontianak, Indonesia. I also teach at the same program that is MA in ELT. Uh, I am also the founding president of L Team, English Language Teaching Materials Association. This is an association for English lecturers, English teachers, and English language teaching materials developers. Everyone from all over the world, uh, uh, welcome. Yeah, please join us and we can do conferences, publish journals, and publish textbooks, as well as a course book in English. My materials today is engaging instructional materials in asynchronous learning. As uh, you know that in this modern world, um, materials are available online and so many materials are uh, available for asynchronous learning. Uh, in this pandemic, People uh, learn uh, using uh, what is it long uh, uh, long distance uh, mode using internet, and uh, I think in the future people will move from traditional classrooms into a virtual classroom. Um, even though in the Declaration, Declaration of Human Rights is not included, but uh, education is the basic needs that everyone deserves. Uh, the human right, in my opinion, is only not freedom of fear, freedom of expressing opinion and so forth, but also uh, the, the right of uh, receiving good education. Then in democracy, most countries all over the world say that they are democratic countries and uh, in democratic countries, everything should be open uh, and people uh, must be able to uh, access important things from the, from the providers, including from uh, the government. Good governance is also the issue today and uh, in the asynchronous materials, good governance is also uh, something that should be taken into account. Uh, the technology development, especially information technology, contribute a lot uh, to promote asynchronous and synchronous education, distance education. Of course, pandemic, yeah? In pandemic, people need to access uh, materials from you know, the internet because it is difficult for them to, uh, to come into the uh, regular or the conventional classroom because it is dangerous. Okay, um, I just want to introduce a bit. Actually, I know that most of you already know this, that we have materials in traditional classroom and materials in uh, distance learning. While in distance learning, we have synchronous and asynchronous modes. And this is uh, our concern in, in, the, in the discussion today. Language instructional materials see uh, that language instructional materials is a, a complex concept that consists of language 
then theories of learning, theories of teaching, uh, then the, the role of the teachers and so forth, and the materials. What, what are the materials? Yeah, materials are something that, that, that is uh, visible, audible, yeah, touchable. So uh, when it is uh, just a language system, it cannot be materials. Yeah, so when it is written or recorded and then uh, played to be discussed in classroom or in uh, in online discussion, that is materials. Uh, asynchronous learning. I'm <laughs> I'm quite confident that you really understand this. The concept of uh, uh, asynchronous learning, where people uh, or the the audience or uh, the participants can access uh, the materials, the directions from different places and in different time. It is more flexible than synchronous uh, than synchronous discussion or synchronous materials. Uh, learners can engage with the materials at any time. Yeah they can schedule their own learning okay uh this is a short introduction the advantage and for the advantages of synchronous materials uh, of course it is flexible yeah and uh, feedbacks are available as long as the teachers <laughs> the uh, the the developers of the materials provide uh, space or facilities for uh, for discussion between uh, learners and the instructors, and also learners and learners. That's why this flexible, um, unlimited learners. Yes, yeah. See, uh, if the capacity of the LMS or the capacity of the media that we use. Uh, permit big number of participants, it's, it's really possible. Then optimize classroom discussion, online classroom discussion. Optimize, why? Because in uh, the teaching and learning process using asynchronous materials, the learners can uh, discuss with other learners first before performing uh, into the LMS or into the big classroom. Uh, the learners also can open sources before uh, before making before uh, expressing their opinion before responding. This advantages, <laughs> yeah, it's a lack of interaction, yeah, lack of personal touch, uh, lack of attention because it's difficult for the teachers to see. The, the the learners reaction right away the learners attitude the learners behavior that's why it is a special challenge uh, how to get engaged with the learners you know, using online materials learners disciplines that usually also problems because yeah the the teachers uh, cannot control the learners at the time as uh like in the synchronous learning but is there any is it really difficult and no solution of course th th there should be solution uh, i know you have now this the difference between synchronous and asynchronous yeah, there are some things that uh both modes uh share and then there are some that are different I think uh, some already discussed. Um, in my recent research, I tried to uh, find the possibility of developing online uh, discussion forums uh, for teachers in rural areas in Kalimantan Barat or in West Kalimantan. I found it uh, really possible 
even though in rural areas, um, they, <laughs> many of them got difficulty in uh, accessing the internet. But uh, the solution is asynchronous discussion forum. So asynchronous discussion, discussion forum is good. And uh, there are some, uh, something that should be uh, the, uh, the focus that should be provided by the leaders or the instructors. For example, uh, the learner's discipline and then the, when the participants are busy, then what's the, the solution? The challenge is then finding a leader. Yeah, in my research, I found it is difficult to find uh, motivated energetic leaders yeah, to initiate and to manage the, the discussion forum. I suggested that um, human resources from uh, university uh, experts, mentors can help initiate that, uh, establish the forum and then <laughs> mentor the young energetic uh, teachers uh, to lead and to manage the discussion forum. That's my uh, my research. Then materials for asynchronous online learning. What is special about that? Uh, I already talked about this in the previous slides that it is possible to access the materials from different places as long as the materials have clear discussion, clear operational discussion. It is possible to support student-student interaction because, yeah, uh, the materials do not need immediate response and the student and the students can, can do some discussion to get prepared for uh, for reacting or to get engaged yeah, uh, into the materials. It is flexible, yeah, flexible, of course, and require immediate feedbacks. From, from, of course, from the instructor. It doesn't mean that when discussing uh, things through uh, asynchronous uh materials online the teachers just <laughs> upload and leave them of course not yeah uh to build vivid class the the instructors should be ready yeah to to give responses to the learners uh assignments or to the learners reactions it promotes group work why because learners uh, tend to tend to what is it to be uh, to want to be uh, confident when reacting into an online uh, activity. So uh, they can discuss using social media, and then when it is time for them to to respond to the materials they will do that so it promotes group discussion then uh then the synchronous uh materials my perspective about uh learners engagement in asynchronous instruction is that um learners have their own world their own mind and then teachers they also has their own, have their own uh, problems. Uh, when uh, an instructor design an, an LMS or a set of teaching materials uploaded into the LMS, uploaded into the, uh, the platform, that that is engagement there between uh, the learner's action, the teacher's action, and the learner's action, engagement. Um, but 
the type of engagement is really, really influenced by uh, the psychological factors, cultural factors, motivation, attitudes, and many other things. Uh, also, uh, the materials appearance, the material presentations, the content of the materials, the level of difficulty are also important to, uh, to be considered. Uh, this is a theory of engagement. Yeah, I hope it is clear in your uh, in your screen. Yeah, on your screen. Uh, I'm sorry, with this is <laughs> a bit unclear. Yeah, yeah. Then what what is engagement? Yeah, engagement refers to a student's active involvement in learning activity. So when the learners are involved in activities in teaching and learning process, so that is a learner's engagement. Uh, there are many examples yeah, of learner's engagement that we can talk about uh, after this. Um, this expert yeah, um, said that, uh, concluded that there are four types of engagement yeah um behavioral engagement emotional engagement uh cognitive engagement and agency uh engagement what are they uh these are the definitions and examples that i quoted from the article yeah uh, agentic engagement refers to the learner's involvement, uh, learner's contribution, yeah, in the uh, in the uh, in the in the process of discussion. Um, then, behavioral engagement, the learners are active behavior really, uh, attention, effort, their yeah, persistence. And then uh, emotion in involvement, uh, cognitive engagement, emotion. So um, you see, when the learners are emotionally engaged, there, there will be uh, very close, uh, what is it, uh, relation between the, the learners and the materials. Then the learners are challenged intellectually. Uh, what about engagement in asynchronous materials? Uh, more or less the same. So I suggest that uh, for asynchronous materials, the teachers uh, provide <laughs> opportunity, yeah, invite the learners participation when uh, when preparing the uh, the materials. Then uh to be able to get the learners behavior the learners the the the, the instructor are suggested to help learners pay attention yeah to use effort to be persistent using what yeah there, there will be several facilities in the uh i think there are a lot of possible facilities that can be included in the lms or uh, in the uh, platform, yeah. Cognitive engagement it is clear if we can uh, challenge the learners emotion. Uh, sorry, intellectually giving the problem higher order thinking it will be uh, really good. I'm thinking about the ecology of online instructional engagement. Yeah, it is. It is like an ecology, not like this. There is an ecology that uh, engagement doesn't stand alone. Engagement has a relation with other things. Uh, different students with different engagement, different lecturers, and then technology, media, uh, social cultural context. Yeah. And the social cultural contexts are influenced by so many things. So I call this uh, uh, ecology because everything uh, depends on uh, 
one another yeah okay now media and the platform yeah what media should be chosen yeah to build engaging materials are you going to use lms custom sms lms or standard yeah um then combination yeah between standard template and custom uh which one is better between lms and website or oh, you are going to combine uh, lms and website social media it is now very interesting most students like social media i use social media in some of my classes and the learners are really happy uh, to learn in the uh, using the uh, the, uh, the social media uh, social media is they will now yeah uh, messaging uh, or social networking application this would be possible yeah uh yeah single platform or combination platform yeah that that should be the consideration uh that 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 will <laughs> that will appear in uh when you are building the uh the the teaching materials creating the teaching materials uh see types of there are many types of uh facilities yeah to to create engagement yeah to invite engagement like reaction comments yeah profile visit click share yeah, many things um which one is interesting and which one is something that that you can control of course yeah when you provide certain facility in your lms or in your uh in your mm, social media for the learners yeah to 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 invite the engagement you need to be able to control and to respond yeah the learners will get what is it yeah of course they they want feedback yeah they want feedback from from the uh, from the instructor engagement rate yeah of the key is not rate the key is assessment you need to assess the engagement when you when you don't assess so how do you know that you in that your materials are engaging yeah so the key is that you we, we must be able to evaluate whether uh, our materials our online asynchronous materials are engaging. That's special homework, yeah? Um, now, when you are creating, what should be considered? Yeah. What type of engagement do you want your students to show or to perform? What type of engagement? How frequent, yeah? How will you give it back? make sure that you will be able to give it back uh use social media uh social media's way to invite engagement you see that most social media platform um are really popular and they can invite the the users engagement just like like giving like or subscribe or share yeah 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 you can you can learn from sorry to mention some products yeah you can learn from facebook you can learn from instagram you can learn from uh from youtube and so forth yeah then uh, responding answering question how should the learners answer question using certain template or answering through email or through whatsapp yeah submitting something how to submit and then the how to invite the learners creativity not only yeah not only are the learners invited to 
to do something that is really boring, but their creativity uh, should be invited. Consider this, yeah? When you are creating uh, online, yeah, an online uh, asynchronous materials, the learners need, you need to know the learners need, yeah? Study, yeah, investigate the learners needs. Then the learners context, yeah? Social cultural context, learning context, technological context, yeah? Economic context, yeah? Uh, high order thinking is really important, yeah? From evaluating, yeah? Analyzing, evaluating, creating, yeah? Yeah, creating or synthesizing, yeah? That will be your choice, okay? Uh, culture. Uh, suitable technology, simplicity, yes, 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 yes. Make sure that your materials are simple, simple to uh, simple to understand, and then simple to uh, to respond to 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 <laughs> to get engaged easy. Yeah, don't make your students confused with the system. The learning is really important. The engagement is really important. Don't make something boring. Yeah, make sure that variation. Uh, you have good variation in your uh, in your materials. Again, your ability. Yeah, your ability to give it back. <laughs> don't don't create something that you cannot follow up. Yeah. Then in the assessing your. Uh, the engage the whether your materials are engaging when evaluating are you going to evaluate the the materials yeah yeah so quantitatively or qualitatively so uh, if you're a quantitative person it will be difficult for you to 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 assess teaching material qualitatively Vice versa, yeah. If you are a qualitative person, it will be difficult for you to use sometimes, yeah. Sometimes it is difficult for a qualitative person uh, to do something quantitatively using statistics, mathematical calculation, and so forth, yeah. But if you can do both, that will be very good. Sometimes you, uh, for certain uh, items, you know, a certain problem, you evaluate quantitatively and for other things, yeah, for in-depth assessment, you do qualitative assessment. That would be excellent, yeah. Uh, then different um, engagement. Will you will you have the same weight, yeah, the same the same weight of different type of engagement, or you are going to weight with diff different different type of, of engagement it will be more complicated but uh, it is interesting for for those who, who who know statistics very good then certain research method is really important don't do evaluation or assessment uh, intuitively of course it is not good yeah uh must uh, at least you 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 learn yeah some uh research method yeah data analysis method you use the data analysis uh technique properly if you are going to evaluate uh the whether your materials are engaging or not yeah uh it's some uh, it's an idea of how to calculate uh engagement yeah, quantitatively of course yeah six way uh, six ways of um calculating or getting or assessing the uh, quantitative uh engagement uh, sorry uh, assessing engagement quantitatively then uh, i think we have come to the end of uh, my presentation there are some some examples yeah uh, this is an example of uh, research using in-depth 
uh, qualitative research. Very interesting. Yeah, some more reading that you need to, that you may want to read. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Selamat. Terima kasih. Jazakallah. Gracias. Danke. Arigato. Kuzen. Again, my name is Iksanuddin, a lecturer at Universitas Tanjung Pura. I am also the president of English Language Teaching Materials Association. From Indonesia, yeah, I'd like to say thank you very much for your participation. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.